Hey Falcons fans, today we have a lot to talk about, including a promising spark in our pass rush, a crucial injury update on Drake London, and more as we head into our Week 10 matchup with the Saints. Stick around because you don't want to miss this. Before we get started, hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any breaking Falcons news. Is something going on with Arnold Ebiketti? First, let's talk about our pass rush situation. It's no secret, Falcons fans, we rank dead last in the NFL with just 9 sacks heading into week 10. Not exactly the stat you want to see. Many of us were hoping for some reinforcements at the trade deadline, but the front office decided to stay put. According to Bleacher Report's Brad Gagnon, it's up to the guys we already have to step up. And he believes there's hope in the making with none other than Arnold Ebiketti. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Is Ebiketti really the guy? This season, his numbers haven't exactly jumped out at the stat line. With just one sack, three tackles for loss, and seven quarterback hits so far, it's been a quiet year on the scoreboard. But last week against the Cowboys, he showed why we drafted him. Ebiketti recorded five tackles, including one for loss, three quarterback hits, and recorded his first sack of the season. It was his most complete game yet, and it's exactly the kind of energy we need if we're going to turn things around defensively. Head coach Raheem Morris remains confident. He's been saying all season that our pass rush has potential, and after Ebiketti's standout performance, Morris doubled down. I definitely like the progress he's made and where he's headed, Morris said. It's clear he believes Ebiketti is headed in the right direction. But let's be real, he can't do it alone. With veterans like Grady Jarrett back from injury and linebacker Caden Ellis stepping up, Ebiketti has the support he needs. It's time for this unit to build on last week's performance. Falcons fans, what do you think? Is Ebiketti the answer, or do we need to see more? Now, let's shift gears to the offense. We're eyeing a third straight win as we head to New Orleans, and having Drake London healthy would be great. But as of now, he's officially listed as questionable with a hip injury. London has practiced sparingly this week, so there's hope he'll be ready to go on Sunday. London has been a key weapon for Kirk Cousins in this offense. Through nine weeks, he's racked up 50 receptions for 552 yards and six touchdowns, leading the team in receptions and receiving touchdowns. He's on pace for a career year and is just 23 receptions and 353 yards away from setting new career highs. But none of that matters if he's not on the field. If London plays, he'll be facing a Saints team that's in disarray. They recently fired their head coach and traded Marshawn Lattimore. On paper, it looks like a matchup we should dominate, but we can't underestimate either opponent. Atlanta's two-game lead in the NFC South is great, but we need to clean up against the 2-7 Saints to keep things rolling. Having London back would make that job a lot easier. Falcons fans, how confident are you that London will perform? And what impact do you think he will have? It's clear that we have challenges and opportunities ahead. Arnold Ebiketti may just be finding his groove, and if he keeps up his recent performance, he could be a game-changer for our defense. On the other side of the ball, having Drake London back would be a huge boost as we head to New Orleans. With a shaky Saints team on deck, this is the perfect chance to build momentum. But as always, this lead makes you earn it every week. Remember when the Falcons spent big money this offseason, shelling out close to $220 million for quarterback Kirk Cousins and wide receiver Darnell Mooney? At the time, the NFL world was scratching its head. I mean, Cousins was recovering from a major Achilles injury, and Mooney hadn't thrown for 500 yards in his last two seasons with the Bears. Seemed risky, right? Fast forward to now, and it looks like the Falcons played their cards right. Cousins is absolutely cooking. He ranks fourth in the league in passing yards with 2,328, fourth in touchdowns with 17, and is posting an impressive 69.2% completion rate and a 101.9 passer rating. That's a stark improvement over last season's quarterback situation. For comparison, Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke combined for just 17 touchdowns all of last year. Cousins has already matched it through nine games. If you're loving what Cousins has brought to Atlanta so far, hit that like button. And let's talk about Mooney. This guy has already surpassed his 2022 and 2023 reception and yardage totals. With Cousins throwing the rock, 
Mooney is looking like one of the best values in the league. He has more touchdowns with us than he did in the last two years and in Chicago combined. CBS Sports' Cody Benjamin revisited the biggest trades of the offseason and gave Cousins an A and Mooney an A. That's an incredible turnaround for two signings that many doubted. Props have to go to GM Terry Fontenot for nailing these free agent signings. For all the criticism Fontenot has faced regarding his recruiting choices, his eye for professional talent deserves just as much, if not more, praise. Falcons Nation, what do you think? Did the front office get it right with these hires? The key to early game now, switching gears, let's talk strategy. The Falcons are taking on the New Orleans Saints this weekend. We want to maintain our unblemished NFC South record, but to do so, we need to shut down their offense early. Here's what you need to know. In their first two wins, the Saints ranked first in expected points added, EPA, per play on first and second downs. But in their seven losses since then, they've fallen to 31st. Essentially, if you can stop the Saints from dominating early in the game, you've beaten them. But here's the thing. Our rushing defense has been a sore spot this season. We rank 23rd in yards allowed and have given up over 100 yards in every game. Not ideal, right? But there is hope. Troy Anderson is back in the lineup after missing five games, and that guy was a monster in our Week 4 win over the Saints. His sideline-to-sideline -side speed will be crucial in containing Alvin Kamara. The Saints love to use 21 and 12 personnel, think fullback and tight end heavy sets. This means we'll likely rely more on our base defense, which should help slow down their running game. The Falcons typically deploy lighter defensive fronts when facing pass-heavy sets, but against the Saints style, we'll see more stacked boxes. How our offense can help it's not just on defense, though. The offense needs to set the tone. If we can get an early lead, we'll force the Saints to abandon their game plan and air it out. That's when our pass pressure can really shine. Last week, we picked off the Cowboys' QB three times thanks to being in advantageous down and distance situations. Grady Jarrett and Caden Ellis were feasting on turnovers and acrobatics up front. If we can replicate that pressure against the Saints, it's going to be a long day for New Orleans. The signings of Cousins and Mooney are proving their worth, and we have a great chance to solidify our position in the NFC South by taking care of business against the Saints. It's all about execution, shutting down their starting offense, and keeping our foot on the gas. So, what do you think? Are you impressed with the impact of Cousins and Mooney so far? How confident are you that we can handle the Saints? Leave your thoughts below. And if you enjoyed this analysis, hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss a beat. Go Falcons!